24th of April 2024. Um, this is a second video, just a quick video, um, just an observation. I'm understanding, like I said in the last video, just why the Lord has had me sitting in car parks outside buildings like cafes and even church buildings, praying, seeking God about what I'm looking at. And in my, in my business days, when I, I was employed and I was very much in the world and and, and receiving money to do a, a job, which is which is normal for, for most Christians, a learning curve. I used to travel all over Norfolk, UK, um, and even cold calling, knocking on doors to get business, which was pretty much a soul destroying exercise but it was building me up it was teaching me something and the context i'm thinking about is jeremiah 18 when god said to jeremiah go to the potter's house not the denomination not the church building but go to the literal place where they make pottery and tell me jeremiah what you see jeremiah 18 and of course you probably know that if you're a mature disciple of Christ by now you know that one about how God showed Jeremiah could I not do this with my people Israel is to push the clay right down again and reform the pot as I God want to do that and of course that is the sovereignty of God that he can do anything he wants to do so sitting here, I'm observing life. I'm seeing people, the people groups, the family, the staff, the customers. And now I'm seeing very little difference between church cafes and commercial cafes outside church buildings because the merchants are in the church buildings and have been so for decades, starting with a souvenir shop in cathedrals, big church buildings, the commercial aspect of what I call churchianity is that they are as commercial as the world and vice versa. So now in principle, thinking about people groups and church being people, I'm looking through the window into this secular commercial cafe and it could just be a church cafe with no difference. In principle staff and customers and money changes hands and of course nothing is free in life generally and that inclu includes the church cafes but this is not the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is not about buying and selling it's not even about eating and drinking it's about giving and receiving it's about literally the life of Christ on earth. So uh, I'm trying to simplify it because I don't see it as very complicated. If you say you're a Christian, follow Christ. If you say you're a Christian, be like Christ. And when you understand that Jesus Christ himself, the King of Israel, was nothing like Herod, in fact, diametrically opposite to Herod, Herod, Herod was the son of the devil as much as the Pharisees were the sons of the devil. And Jesus was the son of God, diametrically opposite and opposed. And of course, God is infinite. The devil is finite. We must never forget that. The devil has not the same level of power as God has. And of course, the devil is a liar. So the devil and the devil's people think they're greater than Christ and Christ's people, we disciples. So getting to the point, as I look around, I look at people, I assess them as you do in the natural sense. People groups, there's a group of sporty people, they're dressed in shorts and, and, and football gear. They're probably associated with Norwich City Football Club. And there's obviously the staff, they're in uniform, you know who the staff are. And customers are customers. 
and we're doing this all the time the human race we are all judging each other all the time and there are many scriptures about judgment and judge wisely and there is that scripture that says judge not lest you be judged but we're all judged anyway and the lord showed me at least 20 25 years ago that the world judges me by a standard it doesn't judge itself when the world looks at us and they see us as christians and because my vehicle here has jesus loves you on three sides they see me as a christian and whatever they think of christians like mr gandhi from from india i've looked at christ i cannot fault him but the reason i won't become a christian is christians well he missed the point we, we don't become christians because of christians it's it's not about becoming a christian it's not even about going to a christian church it's about being the church of christ the real church of christ not a mormon version not any denominational version so i'm sitting here looking at the signs what people wear how they behave and in the cars they have signs as well but i don't see many cars which have jesus loves you on or even a fish badge i don't see many cars displaying that sign the car next door to me which pulled out hence this video had uh, what's called a dream catcher hanging down from the interior mirror in their car and they were right next to me so they were the neighbors love your neighbors so i looked at them they looked at me they looked away no thumbs up no recognition jesus loves you no smiles no grins no joy on their face two people came out father and a daughter no look at the signs no recognition well not everybody is attentive to look at at other people but when children look at the sign they often say oh look mommy jesus jesus loves you and then the scowl on the faces of the parents and this is how it is so the, the car next to me the neighbor literally sitting in the bay there they're gone now had a dream catcher hanging down from the interior light and that is their spiritual belief about catching dreams about warding off evil spirits etc 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 and so people have their own spiritual beliefs which they hold very dear and they don't want their beliefs undermined and they have spiritual beliefs they might they might have other religious beliefs and it's impossible for us to to tell them you've got the wrong beliefs you need jesus christ we can't change people's minds beliefs ideas if they've got other religions we i i have tried to talk to the mormons and the jehovah witnesses in norwich uk for decades they believe what they believe and we know they're wrong we know they're a cult we know their doctrines are wrong their belief system is wrong but we cannot convince them because their minds are made up but then when you understand that they are under a spirit of religion call it mormonism and that spirit of the religion has blinded them they can't see they're wrong they can't see they've got the wrong jesus and they can't hear what we're saying to them because they are deaf in their ears spiritually spiritually deaf spiritually blind and they are the pharisees that jesus was talking about legalistic and, and the mormon temple is like has replaced the, the jerusalem temple for them and they would say they are the real church of the real jesus christ and they're not 
they're not the church of Jesus Christ, they're not the church of the Latter-day Saints, they're absolutely not. And the more we submit to Christ, the more we submit to the Holy Spirit of our Holy God, the more we realise that they're not. And the more we realise we can't tell them to change their minds because their minds are made up. Then you come into the Christian denominations and can they all be wrong? Well, they believe in Jesus. They have the Bible, the mainstream Christian denominations. They all have a belief in Christ. They may even believe about the born again experience. But do they have the Holy Spirit? Are they listening to the Holy Spirit? This is a big question for every single individual churchgoer of the mainstream evangelical Christian church. And before you answer immediately yes, it's, do you really know Jesus? The author and perfecter of faith. Do you really have faith? which is to hear what God is saying. And before you say quickly, yes, I think so, that's your mind. I feel so, that's your emotions. But do you know Jesus in the depth of your being, your spirit? Do you know Jesus? And would others say of you, yes, he knows Jesus, she knows Jesus? And then we come into the era of prophecy. I would you all prophesy one to another. I would you all would tell each other about the great things that Jesus has done. Even if you think you know everything about Jesus, you must listen to other people around you who equally know Jesus. And they may know more about Jesus than you do. And we must listen to each other. Personally, I cannot, I cannot hear enough of John chapter 3, 3 to 17 and 21. To me, that's the nub of the truth of my life. Born again. I'm spirit-filled with the Holy Spirit who opened my eyes and I could see myself serving Christ all my life. Submitting to God all my life. What else can I do? Who else has the words of eternal life? Only Jesus Christ, the living water. So I drink of the living water, not the alcohol of this world. And that's my choice. Because Jesus set me free from all of it. The alcohol and the gambling, and the smoking, the nicotine, even caffeine in coffee. I drink coffee. I can tolerate some caffeine, but I don't need too much of it. It is a drug, like nicotine, like alcohol. So let's leave it there. This is an additional vi video because I saw the car next to me, my neighbour. I looked at my neighbour, the neighbour looked at me. The neighbour sees the signs and looks away. I see their sign, the dream catcher. It's a spiritual thing. We could talk about it, but of course, in England, people don't talk to strangers about their spiritual beliefs. They just don't. So pray for us. When, when the Lord told us in the 90s to go into the cafe and, and Trevor and I to take people in for a free cup of coffee in the cafe, we, we realised we were the church, the body of Christ, in the cafe. Not the cafe church, that's something completely different. Because usually, Christian cafe churches charge money. And that is a merchant's issue. And they've forgotten what Jesus said about the merchants in his father's house. So let's leave it there. We've touched on that before. You can look into the previous videos on that one. So God bless you, obedient servants of Christ. I've just heard from Trevor by text. He's, everything's okay where he is. But let's just keep praying for Trevor and praying for one another. And let's keep pressing on, bearing in mind what Jesus said. Luke 9, 62. Put your hand to the plough. And if you look back, you're not fit for service in the kingdom of heaven. 
We must plow on without looking back. Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. Forget the former things. See, I'm doing a new thing, says God. It's one day of salvation at a time. And Philippians 3, keep pushing forward, pressing forward, straining forward, going forward in Christ. And those behind you will either fo follow you as you follow Christ, or sadly, they'll fall away. So we pray they won't. We pray for those we know personally, those who know us, in a sense of uh, they recognise we are of Christ, that they'll start to begin to want to talk to us about Christ, who we follow, as opposed to all the other forms of Christ, in quotes, false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, false Christs, false shepherds, false pastors, false religions, false systems. The whole world is false compared to the truth of Christ. You cannot serve two masters. I cannot say that enough. Jesus Christ is the master God who released me from Satan as the master of the lodge. And it's as clear as that. It's as black and white as that. Jesus set me free from the darkness of Freemasonry and, and, and increased his, the revelation of the light of Christ. I already believed in him, but I didn't follow him. But when he set me free from the darkness of Freemasonry and delivered me from all evil of that associated religion, that's what it is, he is setting me free increasingly to worship him, to worship God the Father in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in spirit and truth. One day of salvation at a time. Never taking God for granted. Learning that God's will is God's will. Learning that it's not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit. Learning that I cannot change any single person. If they humble themselves to God and ask God to change them, he will. Honest prayer is Jesus set me free. And those who pray that, Jesus will set them free. It begins and there's a process. And for me, this is the 40th year of my salvation in Christ, by Christ, being sanctified, being changed, being transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit within me to change me. And I would encourage you to keep submitting to God and resisting the devil at the same time. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength and thy mind and hate the devil and evil in the same way. All or nothing. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Keep praising God for who he is. God bless you.